The Tim Worth Chronicles, Dream State. That sounds so mundane, like a regular children's book, almost. But, no, that's not what this is. This book is an independently published Kindle edition thing by Rainer Ramsey. In fact, I'm not sure if I can really call it a book, because this is complete insanity. Just a succession of sensations and mental images and ideas that don't seem to coalesce into any, well, well, anything that I can understand. Truthfully, if God wrote fanfiction about humanity, he would write the Tim Worth Chronicles Dream State, which is also a dumb title because it implies that it's part of a series, and yet, five years after the initial release, there isn't a second book. Now, at first, I thought maybe the author, Rainer Ramsey, just decided not to write anymore because he got a massive backlash. After all, this thing is terrible, easily on par with something like Empress Teresa. And yet, no, that can't be the case, because on Amazon, there are literally two reviews, one of which is me, and on Goodreads, there's one review, which is also me. So, I just want to thank my patron, Elizzie Violet, for recommending that I check this out, or possibly demanding that I check it out, because while this is terrible, it was entertaining in a way. I've never looked a fifth dimensional being in the eyes before. The plot to this starts off rather simple. Tim Worth tries to kill himself after receiving a swirly from a bully and his sister, despite the fact that his life was seemingly fine up until this point. In, in fact, it seemed great up until this point. There was no other issues he was dealing with, but he still decided to attempt suicide. All right, then. But then, he survives. Not only does he survive, he gets powers from a mysterious figure who uses spider hands to make him strong and fast and shoot lightning and stuff. Believe me, if, if I try and explain every odd moment, we'll, we'll be here until Judgment Day, and we'll both be insane by the end of it. From this point on, there's going to be spoilers, if, uh, if you care at all. Like I said, this book is somewhat entertaining, but nonetheless, I can't, I just, I, I can't talk about it without going into detail. So, as I said, Tim tries to kill himself, and then wakes up with powers. Unfortunately, when he wakes up, he's lost his memory, which, okay, amnesia is a pretty common trope in stories of all sorts, but... Considering that the audience already knows who he is, and he's there with his family, and they tell him who he is right away, and he just freaks out and runs off, the amnesia doesn't really add anything to story or character at all, so there's that. But then he runs off, and he sees a sentient poison cloud rise out of a lake, and it goes towards a house full of people having a party, and the cloud is never specifically said to be sentient, but it, it acts as though it is, and it just attacks people, so Tim goes and saves them. And at some point, he gets his memory back. I don't remember exactly how or why, but as I said, I, I entered a dissociative state when I read this. It, I left my body, I started floating up towards the ceiling, it was, it was something else. Not long after this, Tim threatens his sister. After all, her and her boyfriend were the ones that bullied him, and also, her boyfriend is murdered by some sort of creature, which was not sent by Tim, but everyone thinks it was sent by Tim, including Tim's father, who, after seeing him with his super strength and super speed, still threatens to beat him with a belt at multiple points. Uh, uh, all right. So then, while Tim is outgoing doing his, I don't know, vigilante superhero thing, his family is attacked by bad guys... That's really all they are. They're, they're bad guys led by generic McEvil nasty. Or generic McEvil evil, whatever you want to call him. Basically, he's the head of the New Zealand militia, which I don't believe is a real thing. But the New Zealand militia is also a company, and so he's a super powerful evil dude who has money and wants to do things. Um, alright. So the evil man tries to find out where Tim is by 
interrogating, read, torturing his family, including his mother and his sister. He murders his father right away, and then as for his mother, he cuts off her ear and begins to cook it on the stovetop. Um, okay, I understand cutting off the ear, but what, what purpose does cooking it serve? Does Is that more intimidating? I, uh, all right. But then he kills the mother, too, and takes his sister and runs off. So then Tim comes back, discovers his sister is gone, and he runs after her and gets imprisoned to try and save her. Okay, that, that makes sense. He's a, he's a hero and all. By this point, we're around halfway to two-thirds done with the book, and while he's imprisoned in a special cell that will prevent him from escaping with his super powers, which are not super well explained, but we'll just move past that, and there are other people there who also have powers. Names are unimportant, but th that's basically the whole role they have in the story. They, they also have powers, and they're down there with him. And while Tim is imprisoned, he discovers the truth about things. You see, it turns out that the world they're in is not the real world. It's actually a Matrix sort of thing, only instead of a computer simulation, it's a dream simulation. Um... Uh, all right, that's fine. But it also turns out that humanity was put into this thing not by robots, but by spider aliens known as arachnids. And one of the arachnids also prevented Tim from dying and gave him his powers, because he just sort of rewrote the programming that allowed them to live so that they have powers when they're inside this dream state matrix thing. Okay, F fine, I... what? It turns out the human villain, generic McEvil Nasty, is actually an arachnid in the real world. He simply came into the dream state world so that he could rule over it as a sort of god because he's not that important in the real world and he just wanted to be important. And so there are sort of two climaxes here. The first one is where Tim fights the generic McEvil Nasty who has created a giant weapon monster thing out of store plastic mannequins. Uh, again, just, just don't bother asking for an explanation because there isn't one. And after he defeats him, he tries to pull Tim out of his, like, cryo tube pod thing and into the real world so that he can kill him. But it, then the evil council of vagueness which rules over the arachnids uh they take tim and the evil guy away and they put the evil guy on trial and kill him because it turns out that they didn't put humans into the dream state out of any sort of malice no 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 you see they they came to earth and tried talking to humans and then the humans like went to war with them or something and somehow they won that war all right, that's fine, they have superior technology, but then instead of killing us, they put us into the dream state because we need to learn. But wouldn't that make it harder for us to learn if we aren't actually interacting with the aliens or the universe at large? That that doesn't make any sense, bro. The council is also about to kill Tim, but he asks them instead to just make him a god of the dream state. And then they do it. We actually don't get to see how we convince them, we see him start to ask them, and then it just cuts away to later when the dream state world has been rebuilt, and, well, we don't actually know what became of Tim, because he's not living amongst humans anymore, he's just living as a god, and that's, that's the end of it, that, that's how it ends. What the fuck? As I said, this isn't a story, it's just a bunch of sensations with no order. It's like watching a toddler scribble with crayons on a piece of paper. Maybe it makes sense to them, but to us, it's nonsensical. The characters have less than one personality between them all. I can't even really describe it, because very few of them even do anything worth talking about. Tim starts off as just a normal kid, then he becomes suicidal, then he gets his powers, and he's freaked out, but he wants to be a hero and help people, then he turns into a violent asshole, and then he turns back into a hero to save his sister, and then he just fights bad guys, and then he becomes a god. That, that's it. And that's, that's the closest thing to a character arc that you'll find in here. All the rest of the characters, 
they, they all just sort of speak their thoughts out loud. There, there's one or two villains that are just evil for the sake of being evil. And, yeah, as I said, you can't even really describe how bad it is because there's just nothing there. Every sentence is also just exactly the same. They all have the exact same cadence. They're all written like this. Just simple sentences. Like this, you know? They give you some information. And then they give you some more information. And it's just mentally taxing to read. It sapped my energy after only a few minutes. And that's to say nothing of just how stupid the sentences are to begin with. Here's a few examples. Get moving, boy. My office awaits, said Mr. Stratford. He was pointing in the direction of his office. A strange figure stepped out of the darkness. They had no actual appearance, except for looking humanoid. Look, the water is getting way too high now. Tim was now treading water. Could you please turn off the water? I wasn't lying when I compared this to Empress Teresa. As funny as it can be at times, it's just horribly, horribly put together. And so I had to give this one star just based on its technical merits, or, well, lack thereof. That said, the whole thing is pretty goddamn funny. It's like The Room, or, well, Empress Teresa, again. It's just hysterical at a few points. And as I said, the insanity of it is, if nothing else, intriguing. I recommend this to those who aren't afraid to lose touch with the world and possibly go insane. Thanks, thanks a whole bunch to Elizzie Violet again for recommending this or demanding this of me. I don't know. Just thanks. And as always, thanks to the rest of my patrons, including the $10 and up guys, Apo Savalainen, Alex Humva, Ashley Watson, B. Quinn, Brother Santodes, Christopher Quinten, Ambis, Emily Miller, Evan Stegall, Joel, Madison Lewis Bennett, Mike, NB Star, Ronnie Tobacco Crow, Tom Beanie, Topher Wheeler, Vacuous Silas, and Vavictus. Y'all are amazing, and I couldn't do this without you. Unfortunately, my next review will likely also be a patron request, so you, you know how that goes. It's... oh boy. Well, anyways, please rate this video if you haven't already, and comment on it. If you've already commented, then just comment a second time. They're both great for the algorithm, because, you know, I want, I want this to be seen. The world must know of the Tim Worth Chronicles dream state. Because the only other thing I've been able to find talking about it is a podcast with like 200 views. So, I mean, just just spread the word, guys. And uh, also subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you all later.